calls to fix and open the Charlotte Mudlake Hospital are intensifying. The Johannesburg Hospital has not been fully functional for the past 10 months after a fire caused extensive damage. For an update on this, we're joined by Head of Internal Medicine at Charlotte Mudlake at Johannesburg Academic Hospital, and that's Professor Adam Mohammed. Uh, Professor Mohammed, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. You speak of an ongoing sabotage of efforts to get more sections of the hospital up and running. Why? Thank you so much for having me on your show. There's ongoing theft at the hospital, there's ongoing damage to the hospital, and we have contractors on site. These are solidarity private companies fixing up uh, items in the hospital. And in this last weekend, brand new areas that would have given us access to the casualty by the 1st of March has set us back another week or two. Electrical cables, GB boards have been damaged and stolen just is an ongoing problem and even uh, last year we've had copper piping stolen, we've had electrical uh, cabling stolen, a non-stop theft of the hospital with active security in the hospital ongoing. And I'm not sure where is it coming from or if it's just a criminal element, but it's not good enough because it's setting our hospital back every week. We're waiting to get going with our casualty, something else happens. The so, time of getting us uh, up and ready is just being delayed. Mm. So the hospital is being further eroded and vandalized with the stealing of these copper cables as well. At what capacity uh, is the hospital operating? So we're currently still running. Nothing has changed from the last uh, year. We're still running at less than 50% of our capacity. We're still trying to open up our casualty. And I, I think hopefully by mid-March we should be open. There are some positives with the Department of Health uh, getting involved and private funding. It looks like there's a positive engagement now with private funders from the government to allow them to do things. But the reality is there is still a lot of red tape. Private uh, fun uh, funders can actually move quite faster if you allow them to. But the red tape is still hampering and the lack of communication and an update, it was two weeks since the uh, department had a urgent media briefing. And mm. from then to now, we've heard nothing and we still in, on ground level have no idea of a plan of action of where we're going. Mm. And it's still our right to know what is done and when it is done. Uh, Professor Mohammed, do you know this aspect at least? There are reports that are suggesting that some of these um, contractors that are being looked at at facilitating repairs have even inflated uh, their prices to the department. Are you aware of this? So I'm aware of it via meetings and hearsay that the normal procurement uh, system via the government system will actually, for an example, say a tender is 150 million rands. And a private company prior to that gave the tender out for six, uh, was willing to fix it at 60 million. The, the system, and that's where the current fight is and why lots of funders will not put money into a government uh, account is because prices are inflated, everyone is taking so much money. There is at least six officials suspended from the Department of Health and the Department of Infrastructure because of fraud from last year. And how can we expect anyone to help a, a, a department which is actively stealing? So the only way for our hospital to get up and going is for the red tape to stop and hand it over to people who have the interests of patients at heart. This is about patients and not about tenders or this department or this minister or anything. It's just about getting the patients the right care at the right time. And that's just it, right? So it's about the broader public that is supposed to be serviced here uh, that is impacted the most. We'll deal with students as well, um, student doctors who are impacted. But this act of sabotage that you allege, um, you mentioned a little bit earlier on, you're not quite sure where it's coming from, but if you were, you know, to really think about it, in whose interest would this be and, and, and why would they even do something like this? This is a public hospital. Yeah, it, it, it's quite, for me it's quite self-explanatory. It's probably people that are not getting the tenders or people who want to get the tenders. But then I'm going to ask you, where's the police force? Where's the investigations? Where's the hawks? I mean, this is about patients and getting the right people to investigate is critical. Everything is just at a standstill. I, I, I actually w would like to know personally how many case reports, how many uh, police cases have been opened up against us and what is the level of investigation into this. 
This is just absolute mayhem, and patients are literally getting poor service, and it's unacceptable anymore. We'll definitely petition the relevant authorities to try and get uh, some of those answers, but um, we briefly touched on the issue of student doctors who have also been impacted here. Just how far and wide, um, you know, is the impact felt by them? It's just not student doctors. It's student nurses, student radiologists, student radiographers, it's physiotherapists. It's the entire healthcare line and functioning that is being disrupted. The quality of care, the quality of exposure to these students have been limited. Exams have been changed, structures have been changed, and it's not fair. And what's not being highlighted through all of this year is that the dental school and dental hospital is also in Charlotte Makeke, and they are under immense pressure. Their cu curriculum has been already pushed back six years, uh, sorry, six months. So instead of completing the degree last year, they now push back six months. And dental care and oral health care is still a challenge in this province. And we mustn't neglect that this is part of Charlotte Makeke Hospital and it's not getting the attention that it needs. As well as the psychiatric mental health care users is not getting the care they need in this province of Gauteng, irrespective of the disaster of life is the many. People are still walking on their toes and not doing anything when we should be up and running to try to sort, uh, sort this crisis out. This is also curious. Thank you very much for the latest information. Professor Adam Mohammed, uh, the head of internal medicine at Charlotte Makreke Hospital.